Keeping production costs down is the main problem of the farmer specializing in the raising of livestock. In June, low-cost grass provides January's expensive protein feed. What if grass were available in January? Livestock must be fed well to produce enough milk. Beef, lamb, or poultry to build up a prosperous farm. Feeds must contain protein, minerals, and vitamins in the proper balance. As feed costs go up, the farmer's profits drop in proportion. In Nova Scotia, the answer lies at the farmer's own back door, in grass. High quality grass contains almost all the nutrients livestock need and is the cheapest crop to raise. Yet, grass has been neglected for years. Following the farming tradition of their forefathers, farmers pastured their cattle in the summertime and stored quantities of hay, field roots, grain, and concentrates for winter feeding. The farmers were so busy cultivating their harder to raise field crops, they neglected their grasslands. And buttercups and weeds of little nutritional value grew unchecked in their fields. Horses can't have much energy feeding off this pasture. There is little nutrition here for sheep. Like this field, many pastures have been leached of all plant food. Unless organic matter is replaced, the acid soil can produce only undesirable plants. Evergreens follow and forests take over. It's happening now on this farmer's land. His production costs are high because there is no nutritious grass here. Grasses and legumes must be fed, just like livestock, if they are to have quality. This farmer first applied ground limestone to condition his field. Lime adds calcium and magnesium and stimulates the growth of clover. It increases production three times the cost of itself and is the best investment a farmer can make. Barnyard manure supplies nutrients and other organic matter. It supplies the soil with plant food and humus and keeps the soil alive and working. Commercial fertilizer is wasted without organic matter to work with it. Now, instead of weedy and unproductive pastures like this, his fields grow lush. Note the unfertilized section in the foreground of this field. Lime, organic matter, and commercial fertilizer develop a good soil structure, provide plant food, and make unproductive soil produce nutritious grass in abundance. Again, note the aftergrowth of clover where lime was applied in this field. The clover will supply pasture late in the fall, but the remainder of the field is lost as pasture. So, by feeding their grasslands, progressive Nova Scotia farmers are now growing quality grasses and legumes. Their pastures are better managed to include a rotational system of grazing. So, a farmer may have field number one, a new pasture coming into grass, two, a grazed pasture, three, a fresh pasture, and four, a field of grass for silage. In this way, the cattle use only part of the total pasture land at one time, making it possible for the grazed area to regrow and allowing time for a new pasture to come into grass. This rotation provides the cattle with fresh pasture every week or two. Meanwhile, the balance of the available pasture land is used to grow grass for silage. When seeding new pastures, the Cultipacker seeder does an excellent job of shallow seeding on a firm seed bed. Grass and legume seeds are small and must not be buried too deeply.
winter rye is excellent for early grazing until other pastures have a six or eight inch growth. Meanwhile, fields of timothy, clover, and other grass crops are maturing for silage. When pastures have been grazed on for some time, they become patchy with clumps of grass that have grown weedy and unpalatable. This is the time to move the cattle to a fresh pasture or to graze on after grass so that grazed pastures can be clipped to remove clumps of grass and prevent the spread of weed seeds. Later, this pasture will again become fresh and green. By such management, summer feed costs the farmer only the care of his grasslands. If grass were available in January, winter production costs would drop. But winter pastures are possible in the form of grass silage. So today, many Nova Scotian farmers are growing more and more grass for silage. They can harvest grass at its peak in protein quality, regardless of weather. While hay may have to remain in the field for days and lose protein value. But even for silage, this type of grass has not the same quality as legumes. such as the clovers and alfalfa. Legumes stand higher in protein than other grass, therefore the silage crop must contain at least 50% clover or alfalfa. When the clover is coming into bud and the bloom is emerging from the sheath of timothy, grass is at its peak in protein quality. This is the time to harvest it but the silage will be no better than the quality of the grass it's made from. It must be at least one half legume, cut at its peak in protein quality, like this crop, and properly stored. After the grass is unloaded into a cutter, it moves along into a chopper, which cuts it fine and blows it into a silo. There are many types of upright silos, the stave, tile, and concrete, all of which are round and covered. The smith locks are eight-sided like the two-by-fours and may be equipped with a roof, but not necessarily. There are trench silos too, these may be like a real trench with walls of dirt, or the walls may be of wood or concrete, with one end opening directly into the barn to make the feeding out of silage easier. Unloading into a trench silo is easy, but it is still necessary to spread the grass well. In some cases like this, the grass is chopped when cut in the field. In others, the grass is left long. Long, unchopped grass makes good silage, but needs more packing. In the trench-type silo, the tractor does an excellent job of tramping the grass down. Silage must be well tramped and packed to keep well. Note how firm it's packed here. Grassland field days are arranged by the Provincial Department of Agriculture to demonstrate how modern harvesting equipment saves time and labor and reduces loss of crop nutritive value by faster harvesting. How neighboring farmers, by owning such machinery cooperatively and assisting each other, can save both time and money while other farmers demonstrate that the job can be done effectively with a silage cutter and a green crop loader. In fact, most farmers use an ordinary rake bar hay loader and a wagon for loading and hauling their harvest of grass to the silo.
how grass is cut is not as important as when it is cut. But in addition, if the grass contains 50% or more legumes, it's worth its weight in dollars. How silage is stored is most important. Bags spread over the top of the grass in an open type French silo keep the air out and wet sawdust seals it off effectively. Then it must be tramped and packed tightly about the edges. Open pit or trench silos sealed off like this keep well. Ground limestone is another medium many farmers use for the same purpose. If desired, a removable frame can be constructed to support an aluminum roof for the silo. The roof is designed in sections like this so it can be removed easily when necessary. With silage as the basis of the winter feeding program, the rest of the grass crop is harvested as hay, since most farmers feed hay for roughage. Their crops of oats and barley supply high energy feeds for the ration. Compared costs of producing 100 pounds of total digestible nutrients is shown here. Pastures, clover hay and silage from improved grasslands are the cheapest form of nutrients available to livestock on a year-round basis. In winter then, when pastures are white with snow, mounting feed costs are not the same problem to the farmers who have packed their silos full of nutritious grass. These farmers are practically independent of protein costs all winter. Silage of high protein content and improved and well-managed grasslands are the answer to the farmer's high production cost of livestock farming. Silage extends the summer feeding program into the winter months. Through their grassland program, Nova Scotia farmers have grass in June and January because they keep their grasslands green. The cow pasture, once neglected and uncared for, is fast becoming the most important part of the whole farm. <laughs>